Welcome back to this week's video. I thought what we would do today is go over a little tour of my truck camper. The truck is going to be a 2015 Silverado 3500 and the camper is an Arctic Fox 860. This is the six and a half foot bed. As far as upgrades on the truck, I've done quite a few. One of the first ones is the tires. These are the Nitto Ridge Drapplers. This is a load index 129 tire, which means it's capable of carrying 4,080 pounds. So I'm running the airbags in the truck and I also have a sway bar. I like the flexibility that the airbags give. I was running the Timberins, but the problem that I had with the Timberins is that I did, wasn't able to adjust side to side at all. With the airbags, I have this remote control, a frame mounted air compressor, and I can change the pressure on the bags so I can change the height on the truck. This is gonna be my upper overload, and you can see how my upper overload spring is resting on this bump stop. Once I turn my airbags all the way up, you'll be able to see where it sits. So you can see that I'm able to get probably two to three inches of lift with these airbags. The ability to be able to raise and adjust my truck from side to side a couple inches is huge. I really recommend having the airbags. The Timberins were nice. There was just no adjustability. This camper weighs probably about 4,000 pounds. So the truck really needed those suspension upgrades. So I've owned four or five truck campers in the last 20 years. And what I'm gonna do is give you guys some tips. Maybe you can use, maybe save you guys a little bit of money, but these are some of the things that I've learned along the way. Storage comes at a premium in truck campers. This would normally hold two 30 pound propane tanks. It now holds two 20s. And to be honest, I really don't even notice the difference between the two 20 pounders and the two 30 pounders. During the summertime, like now, it's just my hot water heater and refrigerator that use a propane. Just more storage. Another good tip is, instead of using these Lego type blocks to level out your vehicle, just get some pieces of wood. I use treated lumber. And another cool thing is if you need to take the camper off, you can use these as a pad. In these storage cabinets, they're not lit very well. These stick on lights work great and the batteries honestly will last you a couple of years. These outside showers, they come in handy, but there's nowhere to put that hose. So I just mounted shower bracket right up on top there. Everyone who owns a truck camper knows that maintenance is just a part of life. And the guy is constantly going over, checking out his seams, making sure there's no leaks. One of the things I also did is I added a drip rail. This drip rail really stops a lot of the water from getting on this edge. And all the water is deflected down to the end. I use this drip rail in a lot of places. This cabinet has it going all the way around. My windows, have them going all the way around. And it almost just blends right in with the camper. One of the things that I didn't like was if it rained at night, a lot of the rain would come off the front of the overhang, hit the windshield, leave streaks the next day. So I put that J channel to divert all of the water away from my windshield. Just remember, there's a ton of maintenance that goes into these campers. I like to use Dicor and Sikaflex products. You guys check out the internet, see what works best for you. So let's talk about power. I'm running two six volt batteries. They're the Crown brand, and I have them mounted where the factory batteries would have been. But I took the sliding tray out so I could get these larger batteries in here. These are a 230 amp hour battery and I'm charging them off my truck's wiring. Normally that would have been through the trailer wiring harness with like a 10 gauge wire. But I'm running a number two wire out of here with this 175 amp fuse down through and connects in the bed of the truck with an Anderson plug. 
from the camper. That wire runs all the way to the solenoid. I control this solenoid with my headlights in the truck. This runs off my battery. My battery is powered by two 210 amp alternators. The Arctic Fox comes with an Onan 2500 watt generator installed. It's really handy. There's an on off switch right inside the camper. It'll run the air conditioner with no problem. The downfall is it's really loud. So I put this Predator 3500 watt inverter on the front of the truck. This thing is super quiet. I bought an aftermarket remote starter for it. Another power source that I have is an inverter in the truck. It's wired right outside here. And I plug the camper in. It's mounted underneath the sink. Let me show you. So this is a 3000 watt inverter and it's enough to power most of the stuff in the camper. I've even ran the AC a couple of times. It only works when the truck is running. That way the two six volt batteries and the two 12 volt batteries in the truck are being drawn from to power the inverter. I have it hooked to an on off switch right up front. My last power source is gonna be a 300 watt inverter I have mounted in the cupboard. This guy controls my TV, charges my cell phones. Now I have this small one here, so it doesn't draw off the big 3000 watt unit. I've done enough mechanical upgrades on the truck to make a whole nother video. So let's talk about some of the things I did to make it more comfortable. A good GPS is important. A lot of people will use their cell phones and there's no problem with that. But if you don't have internet, you're not gonna be able to get directions. I've got this Garmin Drive 65. It's a nice unit and has a lot of preloaded points of interest. The truck camper, your rear view, it's often obstructed. So I installed this wireless rear view camera. Seat covers are actually a really good upgrade. They make the seating more comfortable. These are rough country. They've got a little bit of foam in them makes a big difference. I removed part of the back seat and made this workbench. It comes in handy. I put the e-bike on it. I also carry extra water jugs and tools. I power my e-bike and other tools with this 1100 watt inverter. That's gonna finish up the truck. Let's take a look at the camper. All right, let's start in the back. A couple of the things I recommend, bungee cords. Always carry a couple. You can hang laundry by them. There's a lot of good uses that bungee cords come in for. The other thing is a grab handle. This helps keep the door closed when you're going down the road and also helps me get up in the camper. This was an aftermarket install and I'd really recommend getting one. Let's take a look inside. There's actually quite a lot of room when the slide's in. I'll show you that now. I use the slide maybe 50% of the time. If I'm in a parking lot, I definitely don't put the slides out. So if you're like me, you've probably watched a hundred videos on camper tours and I'll be honest with you, they're all pretty much about the same. Other than some paint here and there, a few different things, these camper layouts are kind of similar. There's a couple of things that I recommend that you get. Having a good blower is important. I like to keep this place clean. In this little blower right here, sweep my floors, clean my counters, especially going down dirt roads. When you come in here, be surprised at how much dust you have in your camper. So getting yourself a good little blower really comes in handy. So I have a 27 inch Samsung. It's a smart TV so I can run it off my cell phone's hotspot. You don't need to spend your money on a 12 volt TV. You can get 120 volt and then just run it off the inverter that I showed you guys earlier. Right next to my inverter switch, I mounted a switch for my converter. Comes in really handy because you don't wanna be powering your batteries off your batteries. Right next to the furnace thermostat, I had this triple thermostat gauge. And what I monitor here is the temperature of the black water clean out area, also my fresh water tank, and also the area by my shower controls. You can buy that thing pretty cheap off Amazon. Really comes in handy. So during the summertime, these campers can get hot. And a lot of that's coming from the windows and the skylight. This skylight here, I have that reflex material light. You can see when I pull it out, it brings in a lot of light and a lot of heat. 
I have enough reflex to cover all the windows in the camper. Just remember, nothing says rolling mobile meth lab like reflex on the windows. So if you do it, have some class, tint the windows, paint the reflex black, do something. Well, that's a look at my camper. Hope you guys enjoyed the ride. It's been a short video. If you've learned something along the way, you can take with on your trip. In the meantime, just remember, be kind, be honest, we'll see you down the road.